IGE is a unique organization, founded 20 years ago by Robert Seipel, first ambassador for religious freedom. And when I look at the strategic direction that IGE is taking, it is definitely very much focused on religious freedom in our world today. It's building relational diplomacy and trust with high-level government officials in a country, and then working with them to start open dialogue and being invited by these governments to then conduct training on religious freedom and rule of law. Why did IGE start working in Central Asia? One of the main reasons is that in Uzbekistan in particular, it's going through some tremendous changes politically, economically, uh, socially, culturally. It's actually one of the only two countries that have ever been taken off of this list of the worst violators of religious freedom that the U.S. government compiles each year. And so we wanted to come alongside the Uzbek government and their people to see how we could help and to do the work that we do. You know, Uzbekistan uh, itself recognizes and its president recognizes that unless they can establish rule of law and respect for rights, including religious rights, they will not succeed as a prosperous, stable country. We're not here to give you answers. We're here to offer possible solutions, but more than that, to offer experience of how we've seen it work in other countries and the progress that those countries have made. So the question always comes up, who cares? Why bother? Religious freedom, so what? What's going on here that is so important, American and other experts from countries committed to religious freedom, working with uh, leaders in Uzbekistan, the religious communities, legal scholars, engagement with some government officials. That's the kind of engagement that makes a difference. Sharing best practices, you're uh, able to test ideas for strategies and tactics that have traction and really make a difference in a uh, community. Rule of law says that we have a common set of rules, a common set of laws that applies to everybody. It keeps everybody, no matter ethnicity or religion, accountable. And when that happens, there's trust. And when there's trust, people can work together across irreconcilable differences for the common good. They own it from within. Now it's not an outsider name, blame, and shame saying, why don't you look like us? It's insiders saying, we've been equipped with the best education and comparative examples from around the world. So this is truly a shepherd moment of people moving together with their leader, trying to seize the best of the future. You educate people together, and that becomes a laboratory of reconciliation. People who would not otherwise meet in their own country meet at an IGE conference. They often have the influence and the ability and the capacity to be able to shift the mindsets of policymakers, government. You have religious leaders and the people that they shepherd, people in academia training the next generation of leaders, then you can bring about that, that change uh, from the top down with laws and policies and then from the bottom up with how people are thinking about these issues. It's long, arduous work, but efforts like this are indispensable to the success that we do have at this time when authoritarian political forces across the globe are pushing back against human rights, pushing back to restrain fundamental freedoms, pushing back to constrain religious freedom. I have been remarkably excited this week because I've truly seen the barriers broken down, the dialogue begin, and friendships beginning to be established so that we can then carry on with programs in the country next year.